uh, drum break versus my time stretch drum break. I want you guys to hear the difference between the warp one versus the time stretch, and it's a huge difference, night and day difference. I hope you all are doing great today. Uh, today, I'm actually really excited to do this video. Uh, we're gonna be talking about warping versus time stretch. Uh, I've done videos before where I talk about matching the tempo of my samples, and I personally love to pitch up or down. Uh, that's just my preference, but uh, when it comes down to my drums, uh, there's times where I want to keep the integrity of those drums, and I don't want to change the tone or pitch them up or down because then they just sound different. So when it comes down to drums, I will use either warp or time stretch, but after trial and error, I've realized that I do prefer one versus the other, and that's what I'm going to jump into with you guys today. Now, before I do jump into it, I just really want to say thank you to everybody that's been subscribing to the channel. Really means a lot. I appreciate you investing your time in watching a video or two of mine. It really means a lot. I appreciate it. And I will do my best to always deliver and not waste your time because I know time is very, very valuable. So let's jump right into it. Now, in this project, uh, I already have my samples chopped up. I have them in the sequencer already. And I'm at 84 b beats per minute. And now with this sample, I did pitch down, so I, I dropped it two semitones. I'll let you guys hear what I have so far. So I did pitch it down a bit, and I, I've mentioned this before, but uh, when it comes down to my sample chops, I'm okay with pitching up or down and changing the sound of the original sample because it's just my way of flipping my sample around, and I have fun with that. Now my drum break, I do have a drum break that I wanna bring into this loop, but the drum break is nowhere near 84 beats per minute. It's actually at 90, 91, maybe 95 beats per minute. So that's about 10 to 15, uh, BPM difference. So what happens then if I want to keep the same sound, I don't want to pitch it up or down. I want to bring it down to match 84 beats per minute. Now there's two ways you can go about it. You could either warp your audio and speed it up or down, or you can time stretch. Time stretch, I actually like time stretch because that's something that I come from on the 2000 XL where I'm able to time stretch my audio and it would take a very long time to time stretch a four bar loop. But now on the newer NPCs, it does it really quick. Now, before we start testing this out, I am gonna show you really quick how to warp audio. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just have to make sure you know the original tempo of that loop that you're going to warp before you warp it. So in this case, I actually have my drums right here and I have, uh, let's say this drum break. Uh, where is, oh, right here. I have that drum break and then I also have this one. Cool, so I have these two drum breaks. This drum break, the original beats per minute of this drum break, I'm gonna go to my sample editor. It is gonna be at about 91 beats per minute. One, two, three, four, one. So it's only a one bar loop. Now let's say you guys do not know the beats per minute of that sample. The way you guys can figure this out really quick, being in your sample editor, when you're on trim mode, uh, you could bank over to the second page and on the second page, you could click on this from BPM. You click on from BPM and this little window pops up. Uh, if you guys have a one bar loop and there's four beats in one bar, make sure you select four uh, beats because if you're on eight beats, then obviously that changes. So if you got one bar loop, it's gonna most likely be four beats in that one bar, so make sure you're at four beats. And right here, it will give you uh, 91 beats per minute. That's what it detects it. So cool, now I know it's at 91 beats per minute. I hit close, and as you guys already saw, I labeled this drum break 91 BPM just so I remember the original tempo. So what I would do is on my main page, if I already have that loop on one of my pads on my drum programs, uh, what I can do is select that pad, Go to menu and to your program editor, and then you go to your sample uh, page right here. And on this sample page, you're gonna have this warp button that you can select. Once we select warp, 
make sure this BPM box right here is matching the original tempo. Uh, sometimes it will not be matching it, it will shoot another number. Once you have that selected, if you guys see my session or my sequence is at 84 beats per minute. So now if I hit that pad, it's gonna play back that drum break, but at 84 beats per minute. Awesome, so that's pretty good, right? And now if I wanna go all the way down to, let's say 75 beats per minute, it's gonna warp it down to 75 and it's gonna stick with whatever beats per minute I am at with my sequence. If I speed up, it's gonna, it's gonna go up. That's cool and that is very convenient. I actually like the fact that it lets you, you know, it just locks it into place with the, the sequence that you're working with. That is awesome, but there is uh, an issue that I have with warping audio. Most likely, I'm gonna lower down my beats per minute and when I lower down my beats per minute and I'm on warp audio, I just don't like what it does to the quality or the kick the lower frequencies of my sample. It almost sounds like it's a double kick. So if you guys can hear, I'm gonna go down to, let's say 75 beats per minute. It just does not sound good. I would not use that, at least in my workflow. It's just not something that I would work with. So what I've been doing as of lately is, let's say I wanna use that drum break, I will warp that audio. Even though I know I don't really like the sound of warp audio on the MPC, I will still use it because it's so fast to pitch up or down and it locks into place. I can get creative and do my sampling, my chops, my bass. I can work with everything. Once I'm done, I don't wanna stick with warp audio because like I mentioned, I just don't like the sound that it produces. So once I know I wanna stick with 82 beats per minute for my beat, I'll go back to my sample editor into that same drum break that I was working at, which is at 91 beats per minute. And what I've been doing as of lately, if I wanna go ahead and pitch that down and commit to 82 beats per minute, what I'll go ahead and hit process on the original sample and I will extract that. So I'll kind of like duplicate that drum break. And this next drum break, I, you can name it uh, time stretch. Hit do it, hit do it. Now we have the same break, but this one's gonna be the one that I'm gonna time stretch. So if you guys could hear it, this is gonna be at 91 beats per minute. Now this one right here, I'm gonna go ahead and time stretch. One thing you guys wanna know about time stretch is that the reason why I duplicated this file or this sample is because once I time stretch, I cannot go back. So that's why I keep my original uh, sample and I just duplicate it just in case I have to go back to the original, I'm able to go back. So in this case, I'm gonna hit process and on this process, I'm gonna hover through until I see time stretch. Once this time stretch window pops up, it's gonna show me my original tempo of that loop, which is four beats in one bar. It's at 91 beats per minute. Now I wanna detect the new tempo that I wanna time stretch this to. I'm gonna drop it down to 82 beats per minute. I'm gonna hit do it. It's gonna load, take a few seconds. And once that's done, if we hit this pad, That sounds awesome. That's something I can definitely work with. That's almost, I think that's about 10 beats per minute lower and it still sounds usable. There's no audio degradation. Like it, it just sounds really good. So now I'll go back to my main page and on my drum program, this is my warp uh, drum break. You see how it just sounds really like the audio file just, it breaks apart really fast. I don't like how that sounds. Now in my second available pad, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my browser and I'm gonna go and look for my drum break time stretch, which is right here. I'm gonna drop that in right there. So now we have my warp uh, drum break versus my time stretch drum break. I want you guys to hear the difference between the warp one versus the time stretch and it's a huge difference, night and day difference.
that's a huge difference, night and day difference. I would get rid of the warp one once I know I'm going to commit to it, and I would just re-record this sequence with the time stretch to have the, the clean version. So this has been my way of using a time stretch and warp together. Uh, usually, like I said, when I'm producing the track, I'll just go ahead and turn on warp on the drum break just so I can fluctuate with my tempo if I want to go up or down. It's going to commit to the session BPM, and it's just very convenient to use warping while I'm producing because I can always go up or down. Once I already know I'm going to stick with 84 beats per minute, 80, 75 beats per minute, whatever is the uh, BPM that I know I'm going to commit to, I will just go ahead and go to that original drum break and then I will time stretch it to that uh, like final BPM and use that time stretch drum break versus the warp one. I'll get rid of the warp one. Now I'm using drums in this example, but this also works for uh, uh, melodic samples. Uh, it works amazing, uh, pitch up or down with time stretch. That's just the way to go for me. Uh, that's the way I'll be using time stretch on the MPC. Now hopefully this wasn't too confusing. Uh, and if you guys are you know, watching the video and it's like, man, I have no idea what's going on, do not feel bad. Uh, I, I know eventually when you're creating beats and producing, you're going to stumble upon this uh, situation where you're probably going to be like, dang, I remember this guy talking about uh, warping and audio and all that time stretch. And then when you come back to this video, it's going to make sense. So for those of you that have been experiencing with both of these warping versus time stretch, let us know down in the comments, what do you prefer to use? Do you stick with uh, warping time stretch or do you guys are also similar to me where I like to pitch up or down? Let us know down in the comments. Again, thank you so much for tuning in and sticking around. I appreciate each and every one of you. Y'all be blessed. I'll catch you on our next video. Peace.